what had happened here? Uniquely, what had happened here was that in the execution of the business plan, that company, Motorola, actually had misunderstood the fact between linear and exponential. Already on our first talk, Patrick went on about how hard it is in our minds to actually grasp the way between uh, exponential growth and linear growth. And I want to point you to the left-hand side of that chart, where actually linear growth and exponential are not so much different. They actually go in a very narrow area, and that's what we call the deceptive fix, where we actually don't know that actually technology is growing fast and faster. And as we move over time, the exponential acceleration kicks in, and then when really the differentiation comes along. So here, this is a brainwave sensory headband. I bought this for less than $100. I can sit at home, and it tells me actually how relaxed I am. Every morning it tests how, how relaxed or stressed I am. So if we run this now in real life, you probably realize that I'm probably not too relaxed and might be a little stressed here. Okay? So we're probably not running it in real time now. But what actually happens is that we now have research that says actually with these brain waves, in a few years' time, we, at the end of the night, we can download our dreams into a file and then replay them to us, whatever happened. <laughs> Now my wife, who sits there in the back, who really wants to get this functionality. I'm employing a really tough password protection. But you don't even need this thing. There's an app called Moody's. Anybody knows Moody's? Is using Moody's? So you can actually download this app, speak 20 seconds into the app, and it tells you what mood you're in. So I did this this morning, and I was in creative mode. Uh, but now extrapolate. Think exponentially for a second. Where does this move? In a few years' time, we're going to speak into something, or we're going to learn if somebody lies or speaks the truth. Any marketing people are in the room? <laughs> Any politicians in the room? <laughs> well, I, I would be very careful what you say around to people actually having this, this app. But you, you, get the, you get the sense of what's happening here. We can observe this exponential uh, growth in a variety of underlying materials. We can see it in solar power. The price for solar panels has dropped exponentially for the last uh, 20 years. We've seen it in digital camera megapixel. And we've seen it, for example, here in the cost for sequencing a human genome. The Human Genome Project was one of the defining projects in the 1990s. It took the human man 13 years and $3 billion to first sequence a human genome. 13 years. We managed to do that in 2003. Since then, the price of sequencing a human genome has dropped to less than $1,000. And today we can do the same exercise that took thir uh, 13 years, more than a decade ago, in 26 hours. All these exponential trends, all these exponential kind of growing technologies obviously migrate, and even the derivative seem to start actually dropping exponential scale. We see it in companies reaching getting bigger in much faster of a time. This is a slide which sort of establishes the time it takes for a company to get to a market cap of a billion, even if we account for the current hype that is around whether these private companies are correctly valued and whether all these unicorns, as they are called, are too expensive. The trend still stays. It has never been uh, more efficient and faster to get up a company and to scale your company into a uh, big and global reach. Uh, Babson Business School, uh, published a report in 2011 where they said that basically 40% of all Fortune 500 companies will not be around in 10 years. Or in reverse, that the average life expectancy of an S&P 500 companies will be around 15 years. So what do you take with that? How do we react to that, that we now everything is challenged, etc.? There is need for a new type of organization. And that organization is what I would call the exponential organization. It's an organization kind of format that disproportionately outperforms its peers by leveraging exponential technologies and organizational te techniques. Early last year, uh, Salim Ismail, the founder of uh, Yahoo's think tank Brickhouse, uh, published a book around this topic called Exponential Organizations. Uh, this is a sort of chart that brings it all together. What we have is an MTP, a massive transformative purpose, and then two sides of the coin. One is the right-hand side of the brain are attributes an exponential organization should entail that actually leverage it on the outside. The left-hand side is what you can do on the inside to actually make it work. But the most important thing all around this 
is the massive transformative purpose. But what about an old school organizations or corporate in a more old fashioned What if you have oil and gas business these days where you're suffering and have to cut dividends and basically the world doesn't look so bright for you? What's the strategy for a large organization? The first uh, strategy is transform and inform the leadership. Never ever has been more important that the, the C-suit, the people at the helm, the captain actually knows what's coming up in the storm. Because if the captain doesn't know where to steer the ship, how can the ship actually go in the right direction? And this is what I spent now quite a sufficient time, uh, significant time as well, is talking with senior executives who from time to time still think that their main competitors are other large corporations. But as we saw, if it's so easy for a new idea to uh, come into the market and get leveraged up, that a startup within five years can become the third largest smartphone operator, well, you actually need to expand. You look at need to be aware of much larger trends in the industry. Second one, you need to inspire exponential organizations at the edges. What do I mean by that? I mentioned before, and whenever I came up with an innovative idea to start, it actually got killed. So what do you actually have to move? You have to move exponential change makers, the people who really want to make a difference, to the outside of your organization, on the edge. Then they bring up, they build this company, and once it's a ready-made business, you actually launch it. There's no other company that actually has done this better than Apple. Apple, with every product, with every part of the industry they actually disrupted, they always used, took these change makers, very smart people, moved them out, built a team around them, gave them resources, let the product mature, and it actually came to the market, and then it took over that market. You partner, you invest, and you collaborate with exponential organizations. Now, basically that means touching points between the large organizations and the startup community, for example. We see this now in Hong Kong, where already, as well, where large organizations build incubator networks and sponsor uh, incubators with startups. If you cannot produce the innovation in-house, because you old fashioned, why not harvest the community and get the feedback through that loop? And create a light version of an exponential organization. There's attributes, of these 10 attributes that I mentioned, that are easy, easier, if not easy to implement. Nothing prohibits you to actually have a community and crowd outreach program. Algorithms are very easy available now and can be applied on a lot of subparts of an organization. Dashboards internally, optimizing of internal processes, using of social tools, and setting up an innovation department that's autonomous and reports to the chief executive it's relatively simple processes that can be implemented.